go. Sweaty ass, but I'm good to go. Welcome to the official AFL Fantasy Podcast with the Traders. G'day with the Traders. I'm Roy. I coach Destroy and I'm here with Warney. Coach of the Wanda. And Kevin. Coach Kevin. <laughs> He's up and about all right. right. And so he should be because the preseason oh, yeah. of 2023 20, goes up officially. Yep. It does. A notch. We just go. Boot. With this yep. podcast dropping. It means business. It does. I know personally, I've got my team there. I don't really think about my moves to this point. Yep. Now I start to think about them. You know why? Because there are 97 hats up for grabs, boys. Exactly. There are. We're yes. locking those three in. So we've we just are. finished our uh, club preview series. Yes. If you haven't caught up on that, it's a good binge listen. <laughs> yep. Well, good, maybe not good, but. No, they're no, good binge listen. There's some yeah. very good mm. podcasts there. There's a couple that I would have uh, deleted. No. Post. I listened to a couple the other day while I watered the carrots. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to recommend watering and listening to podcasts, nothing better. There really? You yeah, it's what the best time to do it. What's your favourite podcast? Oh, one that I did. Yeah? Yeah, one of my teams. Yeah. Bulldogs. Bulldogs was Who a good did, one. Oh, yeah, I did that. Uh, Sydney was a good one. <laughs> Adelaide's a good Sydney one. Sydney was a good one. Yeah, heaps of good ones out there. Oh, yeah, okay. So if you haven't listened to them yet, go back. Have a listen. Do yourself a favour. Grab yeah, a okay. hose and water your lawn Give and your Give us a tweet. What were your three, two and one? Yeah, let what, us know. Your favourite of the 18. Look, oh, the feedback about the Blues was massive <laughs> on socials. I can imagine. That'll get Good or votes. bad? That was good. Ah. Very positive. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought so. You were very positive. I was very <laughs> positive. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, so you can catch all those on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and at afl.com.au, along with all those articles too. So you can check all those out to see those initial pre-season thoughts. One thing, we've been probably very positive yeah. In, in who we talk about, because yes. that's obvious as well. Probably you need to get a bit more ruthless now. Oh, I like I'm that. I'm to get ruthless. Twice. I like I this. I love that. There we are. Boy, I beware was ruthless. It was. That, I hate that's that. harsh. They see that. In pre-season, I don't like being so harsh in yeah. pre-season. They see Everyone's it. got hope. Jeez. Everyone. Anyway. Has got hope. Right, anyway. boys, guess what? We've got some news. Yeah. Here's the news of the week you need to know on the official AFL Fantasy Podcast. A bit been going on. Um, a lot of track watching. Mm. Oh, We're going to yeah. talk to someone very soon about some track watching. Is there anything better than pre-season track oh, watching? I love every it. Every tweet, Finding every little thing yeah, 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 can yeah. change my team yeah. and a domino effect I'm from one track watch. And it's just every little bit of positive information there yep. just goes, oh, yep. Had Rowan Marshall the other day. Oh, no, the Rowan Rowan Marshall Rowan. Solo one. ruck. Oh, That's good. God. That's what we've been needing to hear. Yep. Did you watch but that? But he, he was the, the one who said it, though, didn't he? He, he said, said it. He said it. I'd like to hear it from the lion's mouth, though. Mm. Mm. What do you think Roscoe would say? I think he's on the board, the I same as the Roro. Board. Although yep. they've got no forwards now. Yeah, I know. The, the important part of this is looking for those players that might be having those interrupted pre-seasons as well. Yes. You know, we're, we're seeing a few players that were crossing off the list as well because of that. Um, you know, even Bulldogs had a match sim the other day, and that was uh, – Baz Lenka yep. and also Adam Trelaw, Trelaw yep. weren't there. So monitoring those guys, they mightn't be that round one start up mm. because of this. There's still a bit of t- a fair bit of time to go. There and is. there's no better thing than the practice matches, which we'll see in three or four weeks' mm. time. But it is um, yeah. So okay. If it's a if it's minor stuff at this stage, are we really putting a line through them? There's forty six days to yeah, go. I'm with Roy. Because I want to be more ruthless with yeah. this this year. That's yeah. one thing that I'm doing differently. Because if I get my heart set on someone and then they miss like the pracky game or whatever, but then they're still ra- named round one, I end up still with them. Okay. And I shouldn't. So I want to be mm. more strict on myself, dog. Putting a line through okay. people with interrupted preseasons. Someone like Baz who Sat out the match yeah. sim sort of stuff the other day. Still running 46 around. 46 days. Stuff. Yeah. Fit as anything. Yeah, yeah. It's too early to put a line through someone like Definitely. that, isn't it? Yeah. You need to make yourself a set of rules or criteria that yes. are very similar to the Roy's <laughs> Rolling 22. Yeah. They could change. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they have <laughs> flexibility of criteria. <laughs> right. Do that, stick to that, and you're going to be a hat man. Do, I can do feel it. it. Might yeah. be the car if you I do You might it. be the car man. It's as good as a Rolling 22. <laughs> right. We'll be making sure we tweet out as much info as we see with stuff like that. Yeah. So following at A. I feel fantasy is a good place to go and for even better content at Calvin DT, oh, yeah, at yeah. Warnie DT and at Roy DT. Mm. We'll give our two cents along the way as well. Now, we have a bit of game news um, and one, the apps, not too far away. There you go. Yeah. Just 
There's a few you. people that aren't happy, Roy. <laughs> but <laughs> they're very unhappy. It's, it's on the way. Tell me you've got Just plenty chill. of days you've to go. You've got to time, guys. Settle. Relax. So it's coming, though. It's coming very yep. shortly. Oh, well, there you I go. I think a couple yeah. of boxes have been ticked off as we that's speak. That's positive. Uh, all that's right. not buyer beware. That's here's, like, here's get on. Here's yeah. other news. Good news. Oh, other news, news for the season Uh-oh. that we've got coming in is that the trading rules, not really rules, but hmm. the trading mechanism, <gasps> is that the word for it's it? It's the first time know. he's ever used that word mechanism. on the podcast. It's being changed a bit for the season in a positive way. Okay. This is Calvin. You have traded out Max Gone on Friday night. He was playing Friday night. He would And you that. got in Brody Grundy. Yep. No, that's a bad one because we're on the same team. I've already <laughs> uh, Tim, you were going so well. Tim English, yep. who yep. was playing on Saturday. Yeah, I Saturday. bought in Tim English. And then on Saturday, you find, oh, Tim English is out now. You can now update that trade. So oh, I really wanted that mechanism. Yeah, it's a great So that me- mechanism would have been a good one, actually. Speaking of rucks, was when we had old mate um, – Jackson. Luke Jackson. Yes. That was a big one there. And people were stuck with him because yeah. he like, was part of that other – Yep, so it's so, a Luke Jackson rule. It's a Luke so Jackson rule. So that works rule. both with the player that you're trading out and the player that you're Look, trading that's in. very so, good. So if, you're play, if one of the players haven't played – they can be updated. So that means it could be a different player trading out yeah. or it could be a different player trading okay, in yes. who hasn't played. So yeah. that's um, yeah, so it's well, a uh, bit of a win in that one. That is a very good, good tweaking of the mech. It's a good upgrade. Yes. The mech. Upgrade mechanism. mechanism. There is another mechanism that's been updated. If you tied for first for a car yeah, like yeah. Uh, James and Selby did a few years ago, the initial thing was first registered. Yeah. Yep. Bit brutal. Never a fan of that. It was good a few years ago when Toyota and AFL came to the party in Telstra to make sure Selby, who registered second, still got yes, a car. Very there. kind, very kind. Very kind for a bloke that already had a car the year before. Yes. <laughs> so that would have anyway, been a fair comeback. That was um <laughs> <you> greedy boss. <laughs> yeah. So that's been changed. <laughs> What's the new rule? So overall rankings. So I need to know this. So Pretty much, uh, in the event of a tie between two or more eligible participants after any round, so it could be a round prize, could mm. be overall rankings yep. as well, like especially hats as well. Mm. So that's how same points were yep. done. Yeah. Whoever was first registered, you might have got the 68 and I got the 67 because yep. um, I registered, registered first. before. Yeah. Gotcha. So, yeah. um, actually, that's a bad example as well because as if you would ever be that high. Get on with the new rule. <laughs> oh, not bad, get to the rule. Oh, so we like get this part. Now, you get that part. Yes. So if there is um, that happening, yes. a tie. It goes back, a tie. Yeah, right. Got it. It is going to be the user who has achieved the highest score on any individual round will be ranked wow, higher. Wow. Like I like it. It's like better. This. At least it's skill-based, yeah. not yeah. login-based. Yes. Yeah, that's cool. And then the login base will come as the backup yeah. from that type thing. Oh, so that's right. It's that's got, that's got to be down there. But, yeah. yeah, so if you get there in round – oh, well, at the end of the season, round 24 is this year and we have a tie there mm. somewhere for one of the major prizes, go they'll back. go back and go, ooh, in round five, yeah. Calvinator scored 2,500. 22, again, a bad example. And the Warn Dog scored 2,700. I'd get the prize. Get, yeah, cool. Yeah, I got it. I had so you've got to have a ceiling these days. You do. Yeah. You've got to have so a ceiling. I'm going to pick my team based around this. Yeah, chase yeah, the ceiling. Trying to pick your team that scores good. well. Yeah. What? Hey, that's yeah. a good strategy. Know, 17 years it. in we are, and you've <laughs> finally got some form of strategy. Yeah, I like mm, it. I'm going to try that. A little bit different. Go actually. for it. <laughs> yeah, so they're two, uh, I guess, in a way, major updates there. So that's pretty I exciting. really like the trade one, to be honest. As far as ever winning prizes, that doesn't that's, really affect me. No, that's but okay. that other one, yep. that I'm oh, right there. We I are like getting it. a hat this year. Well, oh, that's true. I'm going a bit cold on the fact that I don't think I can do it anymore. No, I can. 97 <laughs> available, people. 98. I saw Calvin's team before. <laughs> yeah. 98 available. <laughs> oh, Track watching is what it is all about at the moment, and we've got our man in the West. That is Nathan Schmuck. Welcome to the show, mate. G'day, guys. Favourite time of year, doing a bit of track watching oh, and, yes. and having a bit of a fantasy lens on things with our reporting. So looking forward to a chat. I think every year you've got one of the most important jobs being over yeah. there in the West for us, uh, checking out our Dockers and Eagles. But this year, there's a lot of names that have been floating around our teams. And, and Cal, you're a bit excited about a few Eagles, aren't I you? am, dog, because it's a long way for me to see. I can't see <laughs> nah. the WA. It's a long way <laughs> from here. squirts. Right, so Smooky said again. Now, let's talk WA first. I'm going to hit you up WA. with... WA, that's who we're talking nah, about. No, with mate. the West Coast boys, oh, right. sorry. I'm going to hit you up with my boy... <laughs> 
My favourite boy. I've even got his T-shirt on today. Me too. Elliot Yo. How's he going? Elliot Yo is looking really good. He's got his his power back as a midfielder. That's probably the the most important thing to know with him. So he's he's doing a lot of training with the mids. He's in all the stoppage work. He has floated back to the occasional half back. That's okay. Stuff oh. as well. So I mean, you guys would be across his scoring and and how he goes when he's at half back compared to the midfield, but. I mean, to me, he's a star midfielder when he's up and running, and, and he hasn't been up and running. So I'm, I'm hoping that West Coast are going to give him that chance to be a star midfielder again, and if they do, then I, I think he can be. That's my, my view on Elliot. Wow, yeah. yeah, all I needed there to hear was up and running. Yeah. That's all I needed to hear. Perfect. Right. Mm. So he's nice and cheap. That's a good thing for us he in is. fantasy because he only played the five games last year, gets the discount. So get him at about 70. He's a bloke that's gone over 100 before. So regardless, like he's, he's going to be – the ball's going to be in his hands, isn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. They, I mean, I'll look at West Coast midfield as well, and if Luke Shuey's moving the half back, there's not a stack of guys there. It starts to look really young. I mean, Jai Cully is a young player that they're going to want to put in the midfield – from round one is is my view on him. Ruben Jinby is going to get games this year. He, he looks right. ready to go. It's, it's a young midfield, so I think if you can if you can have Elliot Yo in there, Dom Sheets another player who's probably of interest from a fantasy point of view. Yep. Yeah, there are a couple of senior guys. Tim Kelly goes through there too, but I I think they need someone like Elliot Yo in there, and, and I think he's definitely going to be pushing himself to be playing midfield. He's a, a proud player. Elliot Yo is a competitor, and I think that's what he's going to want to do. So Yo with defender status at 625k, is your lock for you then, Schmucky? I think he's, yeah. I'll have him in my team. If he's fit, if he's playing in the practice games, coming into round one, he'll, he'll be in my team for sure. See, I think that's all we need to hear from it a is. guy like that. Mm. So as you said, dog price at 71. Now, a guy who is even cheaper than him at 591k as a midfielder, you've already mentioned him, but Dom Sheed, he, he obviously is up and about and going well. Yeah, hardly played last year. I don't think he actually played a game. Played one last game year, last Dom year, Sheed. yeah. So, one. Yeah. So, I mean, massive discount on him. And, and, again, one of the senior guys in that midfield. I I mean, I like him because he, he gets around the ground and takes marks. He, he's good for probably a goal a game or a goal every couple of games, Dom Sheed. And, and he's one that, you know, the insiders at West Coast have been talking very highly of, you know, out of his map sim stuff. So... Yeah, I think Dom Sheed for that price, he's he's definitely training well. And again, if he's up and running before round one, then he's he's a guy to, to definitely consider because he's going to be playing games, Dom Sheed. Now, you know how hard it is to find um, rookies to put on the ground or the bench. Now, someone who's really popular this preseason is Campbell Chesser. Um, ticked a lot of boxes coming in, but has there been interruption? There hasn't been interruption. There's just been well, not interruption that we've we've heard about. Yeah. But I think they're just they're cooling their jets a bit on Campbell Chester, and they don't want to push him to round one. They don't want that target for him. Yeah. So I don't. My personal view is that he's not going to be there round one. From yeah. what I've seen in his training, in the the sort of holding him back and and talking about being hopeful of playing preseason yeah. games. Right. If they're only hopeful at this stage of the preseason, then I don't think he gets there for round one. But, I mean, they, they love him. They really rate him as a young player and, and what his future is. So he's going to play footy. Yep. I just think it's it's probably going to be, you know, a little bit after round one with yep. Campbell Chester, which is frustrating yeah, as yeah. a fantasy coach because you know his quality, you know the opportunities he's going to get. It's just you don't have that guarantee going into the first game of the season. We'll just call him a good downgrade target. Through Later the on, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, so exactly. Then with him as well, I guess, then you've got their first-round pick this year. It was first round, wasn't he? Yes, he was. So he, um, he's looking good. Do you think, would you, if you were making your best 22 now, is, is he making that for round one? Ruben Jinby? Yeah, yep. Yeah, he is. So I think there's this opportunity there for him at half-back, and they're, they're trying to take the pressure off him already, West Coast, and, and talking him down a little bit. But he looks ready-made. His size, the training that he's doing, he's sort of moving between the midfield and half-back. So he looks ready to go for me. I reckon he'll be there round one. And it probably it's going to be a little bit of a statement of intent from West Coast as well, that selection in round one, whether it's, you know, this is us entering a rebuild full-on now 
Mm. So we're playing our kids, we're playing Jinbi because he's ready, we're playing Jai Cully because he's ready in the midfield, or it's going to be, no, hang on, we've still got some you know, some real senior quality, we're just putting all these guys in the team. So I think they want to go into a rebuild, and I think selecting Ruben Jinbi for round one probably shows that that's their intent. Out of all those rookies there, I thought Elijah Hewitt would have been the one that got the game first, but is he on the bit of a, the outer now, or is he okay? It's just been a, you know, a lower key preseason for him. And, and I was with you as well, Cal. I thought the, the pass into the 22 was a bit clearer for him. Yep. Because he's played half forward, he's a goal kicker. I thought there's, there's an opportunity for him to, to get his way some games early and, and especially with Junior Rioli leaving West Coast. But yeah, it's, it's just been lower key for him. I mean, he hasn't had the, the same hype about his training over here as, as Jinby has. So. I mean, that's not to say that he's not going to be playing. I think he, he'll definitely get opportunities in the first half of the season, yeah, maybe in the, the first few rounds. But, yeah, we haven't, we haven't sort of seen the, the training from him yet to, to really hype him up and, and what he's going to mean for West Coast. Now, before we move off the Eagles, um, Oscar Allen, he didn't play a game last year, so he's copped a pretty nice discount. He comes in at 358k and could be a sneaky selection for some coaches. Has he been looking all right? And is he, like, what's his role going to look like? Is he going to do any ruck work at all? No, he's, he's not going to ruck. He's going to be just a, a permanent key forward, yep. Oscar. And, yeah, similar you know, to, to Yo, similar to Shuey, they're, they're just sort of, with these guys that have had, you know, injury runs, they're just not pushing them too hard yeah, yeah. at this point of the preseason. But Oscar will be there, barring any other setbacks for him. And, yeah, we can expect a, a permanent key forward role for him alongside Jack Darling. They'll be the, the two there. Beautiful. All right, let's head to Frio then. And, <coughs> sorry, I believe you, uh, believe you went along to a... Uh, a bit match of a, sim. A match sim. That's, what, that's been the, the terminology that's crept in a lot more now. Yeah, not, yeah. A, not a little scratch match or, no, or match those sim. match yeah. sim. That's mm. what we're calling them these days. So how did that look to you? Yeah, it's really competitive down at Freo. They're, they're going hard. And this was sort of a, I mean, to my eye anyway, it looked like a, a best versus the rest, you know, a clear A and B team. But the, the interesting thing about this, Matt Sim was that they had their, their young midfielders, Matthew Johnson, Neil Erasmus, Nathan O'Driscoll, you know, as the, the starting centre bounce trio for the, the rest team. And yeah, I reckon they're three guys who are going to be putting some serious pressure on really early for games. And I know that Freo have liked to do this in the past. They've liked to just hand some challenges to young players. And I reckon this was a match sim where they've probably done that with those three. They've said, all right, we're going to, we're going to pick you three up against our three you know, senior midfielders, our three really seasoned guys, and see how you go. Mm. And they, they went really well. They held their own. And I think for me, Johnson and Erasmus were, were standouts. And I know Johnson, he's a, he's a guy that's on everyone's minds mm. from a fantasy mm. point of view because of his price. 200 k um, for him. Yeah, and I, I reckon the path into the team for him is probably the wing. So... He's got to get past someone like Nathan O'Driscoll or come in as like a, a third winger. But I, I reckon there definitely is some, yeah, some hype around him at Fremantle and some prospects for him to be playing this year. Well, there's going to be a bit of a hole in the um, the midfield for spots, essentially, because you had uh, the retirement of David Mundy, so that there's a little bit of a chunk there. But also, Nat Fife, how many, like, do you think we're going to see him at many CBAs at all? I don't. I think it's almost going to be a bit of a break glass in case of emergency yeah. situation with Fife because every every training session I've been to, every every little match sim as we're calling it, yeah, you know, he's been starting out of the goal square. Yeah. So he, yeah, he's permanent forward. People I've spoken to are saying he's, you know, he's hundred percent committed to this forward role this year. So it's almost going to be, you know, if they've got injuries in the midfield, if they need to to send the big dog in there, they might do it, but. Yeah, right now it's it's a forward role for, for Nathan Fife this year and, and it's going to be Brayshaw and Sarong's midfield. Yeah, well, now we don't love that for fantasy for Fife, but geez, that'd be exciting to have him as your, oh, wouldn't you your ever? target up forward. 
Oh, good. Wouldn't mind going along to Fifey, would you? No, you no it's bloody awesome. But I'm a bit worried about that for my keeper league, to be honest. <laughs> Are you? Um, I might actually delist him if he's starting out of the goal square. Okay. I don't like that at all. Have you seen the Fords, though? You might as well keep him. That's okay, I'm keeping him. Good point, dog. <laughs> um, now, I do love a name, too, Cow. I know so you love Matt a name. Matt Fife is a name. Do you want Maybe I will keep him. Yep. Now, someone who excites me is Hayden Young. Oh, now, yes. when we've seen that young kid at his best, it is outstanding. And he can convert it to a score as well. Now, what have you seen from Young this preseason? And can he go to the next level again, which would have him basically knocking on the door for the role on 22 as a top six defender? Definitely. Whoa. Yeah, when when we talk about players like Hayden Young, the, the phrase is "love the ball in his hands." Oh, That's him. Oh, like dear. they they get the footy in his hands because he's the guy with that piercing, and they love to move quick off halfback. Freo now they they're moving a lot quicker than they have in the past. They've been a little bit careful in the past, but he's the guy who can can really set them up with that dangerous kick off halfback, and then Jordan Clark's the guy that can set them up with speed. Yeah. And he's looked terrific. He's looked outstanding in the match sim and, and getting a bit higher up the ground as well, mm. Hayden Young. So I don't know if that sort of points to to a new role for him, but, but at the moment it's mostly been half back and then creeping up the ground a little bit and, and using that dangerous kick going inside 50. So, yeah, he's he's a guy who I think Freo I've got really high hopes for. Yeah, he's he's a guy who there's some some hype about. Could he be an All Australian? That that's been the conversation wow. about him recently in yeah. Perth. And I, I don't think it's overstating things. I think that's his his quality, and they're going to be just just using him every chance they can. Yeah, so he, plus um, sixes. Mate, he averaged eighty eight last year, which was already a breakout year. He's very good in the finals though. In elimina- elimination final, one twenty two, and mm. then he had a ninety eight. Yeah, he's yeah. very good. So he could push that 100 mark. 100%. Mm. Rolling 22. Maybe I'll just put him straight in there. <laughs> he could be. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's have a look then at the rucks. They're going to cause us a lot of headaches. It's a new look uh, ruck department for Frio. Lost Meeky, but um, Darcy will still be the main man. Luke Jackson, what's his role going to look like, do you reckon? So, I mean, there was, there was talk about Luke Jackson just before he came to Fremantle and and when we, we all knew that he was going to Fremantle, about him being this hybrid player who could play in the ruck, play in the midfield, go on a wing, push forward, do whatever you need him to do. And that's what Fremantle were, were almost sort of pitching to him. But since he's arrived, it's it's been a lot more forward. So, yeah, I, I could see his role basically being what Rory Lobb was doing, being the, the key forward who gives Sean Darcy relief in the ruck, but giving giving Darcy a lot more relief in the ruck than what Lobb was. So, yeah, I think Darcy needed that sort of as we got towards the end of last year. I think he ca- carried a really big ruck load for Freo. So I think they'll they'll even that up more. You know, what the split is, we'll, we'll see. Mm. But I think when he's not playing in the ruck, he's going to be playing forward. And, and when he's playing in the ruck, I think that follow-up work – you know, winning ground balls is probably something that we're going to really enjoy watching from Luke Jackson because it's it's probably been something that stood out a bit in training so far. Yeah, so they tricked him, Roy. They said, <laughs> they said come over here, mate, we'll promise you the world. Uh, no, sorry, you're a Ford. Well, at least so, they still gave him the world. They did. Money-wise. Yeah, they did give it to him. So where where are we upset. ranking Darcy, though? That's the thing now for our well, r- ranking. He's got to be lower than probably what he was I because think so. I think there's more of an opportunity for mm. Jackson to Jackson's chop out. Jackson's better than Lobb. He's been promised. Mm. So, <laughs> yes. Crikey. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's one we need to have a look at. We do. Very closely. Well, Schmucky, thanks very much for your time, mate. Have you uh, been having a tinker with your fantasy team as yet. You got any uh, locks, early locks for us at the start of, uh, well, end of January still? I haven't, I haven't picked my team yet. I'm a late selector, but I mean, the, if we're going to talk about the guys who have been under my nose, I'd, I get fooled by them a little bit, but Caleb Sarong looks yeah. outstanding and, and he's a guy who, I mean, I always think about the trajectory that he's on and, and it's a Lockie Neal style trajectory yeah. and I do love him as a player, so he's one that I'll probably end up with in my team just for just for fun because I love watching him. Yeah, I like that. And Andy Brayshaw, can we pay as much for him, or or do we fade him initially? Can he do, can he back it up because he was very good? It's close to a million dollars, isn't it, for Andy yeah, Brayshaw? Yep. So yep. I I don't think. I mean, if we're going to talk pure fantasy, I'm probably not starting with Andy Brayshaw, but I don't see him getting any worse. I see him nah. just getting better each year. So. Really? 
He's a terrific talent in the game, the way that the game is played at the moment. Suits him. He stays involved when the ball's with the opposition. So, yeah, I like him as a pick as well, if you're happy to pay it. Just got to just gotta get rid of the tag as a way from him. That's the biggest thing we it saw is. a couple of times last year, which got a little bit ugly as a mm. member of the Warn Dogs. But anyway, <laughs> oh, it's all good. He never forgets, Schmooky. He never <laughs> forgets. <laughs> Thanks very much for your time, Schmooky. And, well, we look forward to following all of your uh, – Sweet tweets and articles on uh, afl.com.au. And if you want to hear, because Schmooky sounds good, mm, you yeah. can jump back and have a listen to a couple of uh, AFL dailies recently. So go and check out those podcasts and you can get a little bit more intel and insight on our WA teams. And of course, he has his hat in the ring for Journo of the Year. Yeah, well yes, done. So, yep. gosh, you Schmookie's never know, right Schmooky. It could be your year. Could be his year. Love it, guys. Good to chat to you. <laughs> Right, okay, so this podcast, the main thing, yep. the main focus of it is yep. that we are looking at defenders. So we'll run through defenders this week, another position next week, and so on. Mm. But defenders is what it's all about today. And for a lot of us, it's the first place that we click because it's at the top of the page yep. and where we go. So we're going to actually have a look at who we think are the best, who we think are good picks, who we might be able to make some cash out of as well. So it's pretty much a bit of an overall look at... Might even chuck in a couple of drafties in there too, dog. Yeah, mm, that's okay. a good idea. Mm, yes. Good idea. Calculator. Anyway, play on. All right, let's go. You know how I think we need to start with this. Okay, destroy. All right. Wow. All right. The best form of defender is an, an attacking defender. Oh, I like that. Right. So, number one, we're starting with a dude who not only racks up when he is back, but he racks it up even more when he's in the midfield. He comes at a premium price, 977 to be exact. It's Sam Doherty. Okay. Yep. Number one, and we're paying up for the record and taking a bit of that. You're doing it? Yeah. Yeah. I think I am. I'm all in on this as well. Oh, so yeah. let's not forget, he's gone 117 before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So as you said, you're playing in the midfield with Sam Walsh out. out. Yeah. yeah. I also think he's going to be in there more than he ever yeah. has before. So two games at the end of last year as a straight up midfielder, 123, 137. Yeah. He Incredible about, return. He averaged about 118 in his last eight to 10 games as well. So you could say he's underpriced. Now, <laughs> you could throw a blanket over the next few. Mm. It gets quite interesting. So I Agreed. think I think it's Doc then Daylight. Yep. But then I've come at Jordan Dawson yep. is two, Gus Brayshaw three, Sinclair four. Right. Okay. Now, they're a sort of little blanket. Yeah, agree. So they're in their little tier of their own there, aren't they? Are. they those yep. three. Yep. About 100. About 100. All feel... Pretty safe, even helmet. Yep. Like he's safe for that hundred yep. type thing because he's moving back into the midfield as well, allegedly, and that is where he he does score better. Like you talk about Doherty, he scores well in both. So does Brayshaw to some extent, but he just I'm a, I feel a lot safer with him in the midfield. Brayshaw went as a midfielder for the last three games yeah. at an average of one oh six. Yeah, it's that's happening. That's yes. what we need. Yeah. Okay. After that, I've gone Dacos. Mm-hmm. At yeah, D5. Wow. I don't mind that. Second year player. Yeah. At number five. Yeah, in a and I 22. feel like I'm really confident with it um, as well. His upside's massive. I think he had 600s Seven. last year. Seven. There yep. you go. Um, then I re- found it really hard to round it out with the D6 spot. Okay. Right. Now, there's guys in the mix here. Sick Dog, Tom Stewart. Both mm-hmm. just solid as rocks. <sighs> you got a guy. Yeah. Aaron Hall. I see who a- actually has the Aaron- biggest Aaron Hall could be D one feeling out of a lot of them. D two dog, don't don't get take but it. But he could be D one. He was D one at one he's point. 20 yeah, he's twenty points. Than, yeah. Yeah. Twenty points unders. So <laughs> what he did the year before. So we've got Aaron Hall. <laughs> like good. what does Clarko want him doing? Back to Running being a- free back yep. there? Because he's just sitting there. Now the criteria that hurts him is obviously durability. <laughs> that does it's, hurt. And it drags him right down. So he misses. He's the definition. Of high risk, high reward. 100% yep. is. Yeah. Now, Hayden Young is the other one that I've got there that could just bust okay. his way oh, in. Schmooky. Schmooky. you excited about it. He's got me on. Schmooky has got me very excited. Yes. He was not on this list. He was not. No. No, no, he wasn't. Did, um, he, did he improve too much last year? He nearly went up 20 yeah. points. Mm. You know, so. He's See what a, he did in the finals? He's had an 88. He had a couple of good ones in the final. He 122 and 88. So. He's a guy that can take double figure marks too. They want it in his hands, as Schmooky said. At the moment, he's. Um, 
second emergency knocking on the door. Yeah, 11, dog. 11% ownership. There you go. So people are on board there. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be disappointed either. But at the moment, it is Sicily after that amazing, amazing comeback last year. To yeah. average 97. He he can't be worse than what he was. No. Well, Hawthorne are going to be worse, so therefore the ball's going to be near him even more. Yeah. Yes. He's going to have some big games. Some big responsibility back there. Yeah. Yeah. So is that a negative? Sick dog rounds it out. Might he have more responsibility in there for no, scores? No. Because no, they just want it in his head. He'll yell at the kids and bully them and <laughs> make them kick it to him. You know what he's like. <laughs> so so plenty of switch in to kill the clock. Have they their captain yet? No, nah, but it's got to be the dog. Yeah. They? The dog gets it. So yeah. that'll be another thing that needs to be factored into the rolling 22 mm. calculator. Yeah. Because that's a criteria. Will. No, it is. Yeah. I don't think it'll be enough to move him, though. <laughs> <laughs> right. There Good. you go. So rolling 22, Doherty, Dawson, Brayshaw, Sinclair, Dacos, and the sick dog rounds it out yes. at number six. With a few that – Mitch Duncan? Oh, 100%. Mitch Duncan could be there. there. Yeah. Small potatoes right, been running through the middle. Yeah, that yep. was a track-watching one. 100%. You never know what he's going to do. Oh, not much, but yep, 20. <laughs> oh, <laughs> can't forget that stuff. No, nah, but no, small potato, don't worry, he's in the mix. All right, let's have a look at what people are doing. The ownership numbers across the defenders. So number one, 52%, Campbell Chesser. Line through him. Look, now. it's – Line it's, through. It is. He cannot be even on your bench, I don't no. think, at this point. No, he so. cannot. But Might as well fix that still up. Six now. weeks to go, but it yeah. is. But he will be there at some point. Well, downgrade target, as we mentioned. He will. The only thing is, the ramifications of that preseason wise, dog, is a lot of people's structure were relying on him 100%. being on the field pretty much. So no. we'll talk about some cash cow no in a bit as well. Uh, Dacos is now the most second most selected uh, player. Clever. Obviously the premium, uh, well, an underpriced premium is sort of calling there at seven sixty nine. Yep. Breaking out is pretty much the the aim, yeah. the goal for him, and that's why you'd be starting with him there. Darcy Wilmot, no reasons not to have him. Made his debut in the finals, was in the team. Let's fingers crossed he stays in the Lions team there. And Ginby is the next one, number four. He's in 40% of teams just like Wilmot. So those two could be a D5 and D6 mm. potentially. Um, know that Wilmot, it's about job security for him. It's not really about that elite scoring. No. A, a good score in the finals. 55 like, average, I think yeah, it was. So And what do we want so from a rookie Roy? Yeah. 50. That's it. Yeah. Don't ask much these we days. We don't ask 50. much at all. I used to ask 70. Yep. Look what it's become. I'll make Will Goulds there in 29% of teams just because it's a preseason. So. <laughs> He's in mine. He's um, in mine. <laughs> and then, Roy, people are believing the oh. uh, the sick dog hype a little bit. Are so they? He's actually in there um, as the sixth uh Defender. That's very. Yeah. That's his in spot. popularity. Yeah, and it actually surprised me that he's been picked up by more people than Elliot Yo, who I think is one of the the must haves. Do you know I'm what? I'm feeling like six twenty five k for him. Not only is Elliot Yo a bargain, he's actually in the mix for the role on twenty two. Yeah, so he could be there. as 100%. well. Hundred percent. If he's playing in the middle when he's fit, he passes. He surpasses a lot of those blokes. Well, Schmucky ticked it off. He did. Yeah, and but we've got to see it. But he's pri- so he's priced at an average of 71, mm. okay? He's a guy that can easily be a 90 on his day. Okay. He's in the midfield back when he was a tackling beast, Roy. Mm. So, yeah, he's one that we need to watch. Now, the next group, we've got Doherty coming in at 23%, Jordan Dawson around there, Tom Stewart, Angus Brayshaw, and Jack Sinclair. So it's pretty much teams are choosing a couple yes. of those is how it almost feels like. From under like. the blanket. So everyone's getting that group of having a couple of premiums, mm. In their sides, and yeah, the well, the first big premium. Yes, um, I guess Sicily's almost in that in that conversation with that though as yeah, well. For but sure. it is Doherty there. Then it gets down to Calvin, only thirteen percent, which I'm surprised by because you try to sell him very hard. Is Christian Salem? Did yeah. go hard on that. Thirteen percent. He's he, cheap because he's he six fifty three k. Yes, he is. So he was a top ten defender back in his day. Yes, and when I say back in his day, I'm only talking a couple of years ago yeah. here. So. Knee injury round one when yeah. he scored three, he averaged seventy four for the for the rest of the year, which is what he's priced at. You take away that three, Roy, he mm. would have averaged eighty one. Mm. Okay, so he's that, a ninety guy. Too, it's a ninety eyes. guy mm. priced at seventy four, and I also got to tell you, Roy, he plays the Bulldogs in round one. Mm. That's that's a good match. It's a walk up ton. Mm. He's a walk up ton to get you going. Mm. Rightio. So that, we'll we'll talk about some more. 
players owned yeah, as just we go a, through this. Just a quick one there. That, um, Jack Bowes is obviously one we need to keep an eye on. So he's yep. a lot cheaper than those guys. He's just over 600K. Mm. More midfield time. <laughs> but that, so I've been um, doing some more research yep. um, on that. So he's done time basically with all the lines. Okay. Okay, to familiarise himself with the game plan and yada, yada, yada. And his teammates. And is, yeah, and his teammates. And he is seen as, you know, someone who has a bit of versatility. But it is bulk. It's actually real. Yep. It's bulk time with the mids learning right. from those boys in there. So so he's priced under 70. Yeah. Keep an eye on that one. I know. No one's going to launch into that. But I'll tell you what, he could be he's getting 20 s- points if he's getting the CBAs, if he's getting the CBAs in that practice game, That's it's going to be hard, hard not, not to. to. Mm. Now, Cal, you are the defender man. You are the oh. defender man in the AFL record. Yep. Article on afl.com.au coming yep. up this week, which you are going to look at the defenders. Yep. We've got your team and yeah. what you've done. So structure-wise, here's what Calvinators are. Uh, yeah. Defenders look like. So Doherty at D1. Yeah. Then you go down to Dacos. I'm so not saying you're down to Dacos. I'm starting two premiums. What are, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll talk about price, mate. Just yep. calm, calm your but farm. But it's two premiums. So you've, you're ignoring the blanket and you're just going yeah. to Dacos. I think there's massive – out of all those guys, I think he has the most upside. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's fair. So then you've got – yeah. Then you've gone the Salem and Elliot Yo – Mid-price discount yep. options there. Whoa, this is sounding disastrous. It's which, <laughs> but they, they both <laughs> potentially put 20 points on, do you know what they on do? their price. Do you know what they do? Don't overthink it. No, no, exactly. No. That's a good point. And so it. then your structure currently is two rookies on field. Yeah. Is there a rookie crisis that we uh, have to worry if you're going like that? You know, you say it every year, dog, we're running out of rookies and there's going to be no rookies to play. He may be right. You've right. got <laughs> Will Gould and Campbell Chesser on yeah, your pine. and both may not be there. No. You know, Likely so, won't be there. Well, I but I think, I think we're going to get a couple of names that will pop up. So, we always do. Yeah. We always get a couple of names that pop up. Just your bookend. He's yeah. there for three games. But at the moment, you're right. That's the structure. I'm going. And I think that's the structure a lot of people have gone with at the moment. I would like a structure in the back line, especially if the rookies are running up dry here where you've only got one. I mm. think that's better. One one needs to be there, I think. But mm. at the moment, I'm happy with my two primos. I did have um, Gus Brayshaw in there, yep. but I would much prefer to pay the 100K more to get to Doherty. Mm. So anyway. Right, so the other – cash cows that we're looking at that people are picking, but also ones that we should have on our watch list going through there. You've got the pies there in Charlie Dean and Will Kelly. Yes. Basement price. Um, see if they, if they get are needed. If they're them. needed to come in. That's, right. That's the thing for them. One that oh, I probably should have talked to Schmucky about this, but Corey Wagner, he um, was picked up in the draft, 285K, but he's 25-year-old. He's been listed and we've spoken about oh, him Wags. on the yeah. um, Frio podcast, which you can go back to. So he's one, obviously, to monitor there. Um, other names there, Lockie Cowanroy, what's the chance of him playing for the Blues? <sighs> Not early, mm. I don't think, but if he does – Great little downgrade target. Mm. Mm. Josh Weddle's another one to uh, look at for the Hawks. So there will be kids playing for them. Yes. But he's just one to look at there. He's at 266K. But the stocks could be a little bit low, Cal, because I know you tagged me in this the other day when uh, yep. Matthew Allison, who's got defender forward status. Correct. Uh, he was touted as a potential uh, player to come in, like covering Max King. He was. Injured, you know, a forward to play there. So. Yes. Yeah, so St Kilda basically don't have any mm. forwards left. Is that Allison with an A or an E? Allison. <laughs> Matthew Allison. <laughs> so anyway, we're just going to we're gonna have to just look at some right of on. these uh, players as we see these pracky matches coming yeah. in three or four weeks' time. So, so what about uh, Miller? Was he high on the ownership? No, because he's got forward status. Because we're status. talking about I defenders today. Yeah, oh, no, oh, no. Hey. Because he's a halfback. Yep, two odd years. He'll, he'll have Still defender status. Mode. He will. At but round not six. until round six. My bad. Sorry. Well, you'd have to play as Just well. Edit that. Put the what's that button they press? The the dump button. Yeah, dump that. Yep. Dump that crap. Calvin's <laughs> good at those ones. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's where it is. So, um, cash cows. We've got those now. Draft cow. Yeah, you have. Well, we've been putting together our rankings, which will be coming out in our draft kit later in February. Yeah, um, I'm just getting what have you, you found? A couple of names you could bump up your list. Okay, right. so Jack Bowes is another one. He's obviously Definitely. priced. Uh, sorry, he averaged very poorly last year. Uh, you can bump up a couple of guys as well here. 
Like is Zach Williams, Roy? Hell yeah, is you he, can. He, so he has a 70 next to his name? Yep. Is he ever going to do anything? 100% he is. You right. think about this. So we've talked about how Doherty's going to benefit from Walsh being out because he's going straight in the guts. Yep. Who do you think's taking that flank? Okay. Uh, Hunter Clark's is got a well, 54 next to his name. Yeah. So if he's back and running around, you can bump him up. Scary. Uh, it is. A lot scary. Obviously deeper drafts here. Yeah, for um, sure. But there's a lot of guys in your defender uh, rankings mm. who actually averaged over 90 last year. I think from count there was about 15 or 16 yeah. of them. 15 went over 90. So that's the, the mix there. So, so you had good your dock in that um, 110 to 120. You had two players there from 100 to 110. It's 12 from 90 to 100. And then another 15 from 80 to 90. Now, Cow, that's just in that batch. <laughs> I know that. He now. rang me up. I was got confused. He goes, did you? Yeah. Oh, have you stuffed this up? He thought no, I'd stuffed I up the table for the AFL that. record where he's editing God, it. He's a jerk. I've, I've, got, I've, got, I've got 15 players that average over 90. So, Roy, this table that I've made yeah. for him, which is a great feature of the AFL record. It is a good preview. Preacher. There are 12 people that average between 90 and 100, and he thought that that number needed to say 15. Oh, yes. I can see where, where I didn't confusion. know I had to add them up. <laughs> it's in that group, mate. It That's, says it next to it. That yeah. is nice. Did you make, come up with that? Yeah, I'm a genius. That's People good. say that, which is interesting to have a look at oh, because like when it does come to draft, yeah, we can probably wait on our defenders a little bit yeah. because we then have uh, mm. 30 players that averaged over 80. They run deep. In defence, mm. okay. Whereas in the forward line, yeah. so over 80, there are only 17. God, look at that. So it does yeah, drop away a bit well. more. Massive. So. That's the thing. So that's something to think about on your draft day where you're doing that. And some of those – well, one of the keys to actually doing your draft rankings is is even give them a bit of a projected type score so yeah. you can see what range they can fit in there. Do you – does he do this deliberately right? What? What? So does he not realise that this is a silver medal winning podcast and millions of views and yeah. listens, right? Yeah. And he takes this opportunity yeah. every single time just to be little. Well, you belittled me on the phone. You go, <laughs> that was just us one on one. <laughs> you got everyone. Yeah, Jeez. That's probably fair. Just leave me alone. People I don't get to like, speak to you much. Though. People like you're always up the lakes. <laughs> don't know what you do up the lakes. But... <laughs> oh, don't go there. Snag and traps. <laughs> Calvin said we weren't going to talk about that. Seriously. Now, it wouldn't be a Defender episode without having a chat to one of our favourite defenders in a the competition. Yep. He's a real defender. True Works right. hard. And that is Tom Duday. Welcome to the show, mate. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm not sure whether to take that as a compliment, the whole real defender thing. Is that because is that I'm not, not as great at fantasy-wise? Is that why? Oh, we won't go there you just know? yet. We'll, we'll loosen you up a little bit to begin with. Yeah. But <laughs> you're on board as an AFL Fantasy Ambassador for this year, which is very exciting for us. And it was your first year last year, so I'm sure there was a fair bit that you learnt out of it. But you are a, a bit of a fantasy guru. Um, you've come off a decent uh, NFL fantasy season, have you? Yeah, I, it was a it was a solid season. Um, two two different leagues: I had a Crows league and then one with my mates back in Geelong. Um, Crows league, I lost to Lady in the semi final. Um, I've heard about that a fair bit. Needed uh, needed twelve points from Christian Watson, who was averaging about twenty odd in the previous four weeks, and he gave me uh, almighty three points. So that was oh. great. Um, heartbreaking loss there. And then um, Geelong league was an interesting one because it come down to the the final game between the Bills and the Bengals, and then Demar Hamlin had the the incident, and so we didn't know what to do. So in the final week, we just did a snake draft, just two blokes redraft. So oh, I wow. uh, took Pat Mahomes one, he took Travis Kelsey, I took, or he took uh, Justin Jefferson. So we just did that. Basically, just took the best players, and uh, and unfortunately lost that one as well. So I missed out on a bit of cash in the end. But um, so I can I can hold my head up high knowing that I drafted the uh, Geelong guys league. In my Geelong league, I drafted his team, and so I ended up. Basically beating myself in the draft oh. final. So worked out all right anyway. No, oh, well, that's all right. So, now, did Lady go on to win it? Uh, no, Charlie Cameron destroyed him. Oh, destroyed dear. him in the grand final. He had a uh, – it was quite fun, funny, actually. It was pretty poetic in the end. Charlie picked up Cam Akers after Lady. Lady drafted him early, had been talking him up all year, and then he got about eight weeks in. Trade rumours started swirling about him, so he goes, no, nah, I've had enough of him and dropped him. And then towards the playoffs, Charlie picked him up, and I think Akers – had like the fourth highest score of a running back in the year in the grand final against Lady. It was like he uh, did it just to spite Lady's team. <laughs> That's huge. Oh, well, now That's let, fantasy. That is, that is fantasy very much so. And you had your uh, debut season playing AFL Fantasy Classic last year. What would you give yourself out of 10 for that? Oh, 
probably a three. <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe that's probably being generous, to be honest. So, yeah, it wasn't the best. So, obviously, a little bit different. You're, you're drafting in uh, your NFL league. So, in Classic, we have our salary cap. You're, you're picking your players. What things did you learn out of the year? What, what, let's start with the things that you got right. What were they? Um, I'm trying to think back to my team. I, um, I, I went well, I went heavy on the Vic Country boys that I yep. played with and, uh, blokes like Clayton Oliver delivered, Darcy Parrish, the purple patch, he was good for me. Um, I think I had Kerner at one stage when he was going off. He, he kicked, was a good kicked pick. A, I think he kicked five or six against us and I had him on my team for that. So, <laughs> um, that, that was a bit of sweet, but, um, no, I'm pretty sure that was probably my only thing that worked well outside of I had Keezy to start. I had a lot of Crows boys early and Keezy really worked out for me as well. So having all the Crows boys, was that a good thing or a bad thing? Is that a little bit of a, a strategy you might change going into 2023? <laughs> I might. Um, who else? I'm trying to remember who else I had. I had Wayne Miller. I know I pumped him up on the podcast yeah. and he did okay week one and then didn't come back in for a little bit, but he's he's definitely a lock for my round one team. But um, no, Rochelle was pretty good. Saligo was pretty good. Um, big Riley O'Brien had a good year for us, probably not the best fantasy year. So I think I'll probably stick with the the Crows um, mantra. But the the one thing I'll probably stray away from is captaining myself every week because that was the yeah, uh, that's a problem. That was <laughs> yeah. Uh, I thought maybe I'd have a couple of big weeks and I could jump up the ranks a bit, but it was a <laughs> no, it was an absolute shambles. And I um, yeah, I just have to move away from that if I'm any chance to compete for any sort of competition. Now, Roy, that's like a kid in your class back in the day. Oh, don't bring up that. So <laughs> here he is. So our mate Tom here, average 59. Yeah. Double 59. He's yeah. 118 as a captain. That's yeah. a pretty good score. It <laughs> certainly is. He used to double exactly. his worst player, Tom. So oh, I'm not that... saying Tom's the worst player. <laughs> so Cow's getting stuck into you now. Oh, I pretty much was, yeah. I was. <laughs> no, look, captain responsibility, mate. It's a, it's a heavy weight. It it's is. a heavy burden. So don't go doing that to yourself. Just let yourself play free. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, I mean... <laughs> I mean, I've got blokes in my team like like Smithers and Lady and all that. I'm I'm trying to feed them the ball as well. Exactly. So I'm sort of, you know, That's just hurting myself. So I just take the captaincy off myself, keep myself in the team, and then just feed the other boys and let them double their score. I like it. Well, it might be Lady that you want to make your captain. And so he was our uh, highest scoring player last year or highest averaging player. He ended up... Um but coming in this year at one point oh six million dollars, a lot of money a spending lot. on. Do you think we should do that? Can you see Laddie taking his game to another level? He he built into the season very well and finished the year in tremendous form. Yeah, he's a he's a monster. That bloke. I don't I don't know um, how how often someone gets up to the million mark to start the year, but he he hasn't missed a beat in preseason so far. So I'm, how he finished is probably how he's going to start. And, how he finished was probably worthy of that million mark, so I reckon he'll be uh, he'll be in my team. But yeah, it is pretty expensive when you've got to build out the rest of the roster, isn't it? Yeah, he did go one twenty nine, I think, in his last ten. So he did, and he had a, he had an Ooh. interrupted start to the season last year he as did, well. Bro. So, um, gosh, what he did in that back half is a lock. You got to start. Like Tom with. said maybe yep. that is the preview. He's underpriced. Yeah, and Tom, if At we pick million, if we spa, if we pay a million dollars, can we have your word that you'll try to get it to him as often <laughs> as you can? <laughs> Well, let, let me um, let me build out my team first. Okay. And if I if you can if, fit if in, I can't, yeah. if I can resist that temptation to uh, captain myself, and I put it on Lady, then I'll let you know that I'll be feeding. It. One thing I need to know: How is it obvious that Lady is taking it seriously? He's yeah. chasing points because <laughs> he he knew full well that he's on the verge of potential pig status, yeah. which is just the the ultimate. Yeah. Yeah. He knows what he has to do. Does does that show in the change rooms? Does he know that he's out there racking up these numbers? Oh, yeah. Look, I think so. I yeah, think good. we can now. Uh, <laughs> we can make without uh, yeah, without going into too much detail. I think Lady knows he's had a few touches this week. <laughs> no, the beauty of he's him uh, last year was all of those tackles, which was uh, oh definitely definitely helped. He had that massive game. Did he have twenty tackles? Twenty tackles. tackles. Yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous. Now I'm going to hit him up with some mm. hard hitting questions. Oh, here, here we go. I'm actually, Crow. I'm putting my hand up for Fantasy Journal of the Year. Right. right. And here are some names, Huge. Tom. I'd like Huge. to know your. I'm going to sabotage your campaign. Well, yeah. let's start off with someone who did sabotage our. You did campaign. that to us last year. He well, did. this is this is Wayne. <laughs> no, no, listen. I think Wayne's back. Is Wayne back? Yeah, Wayne's back. Look, um, Wayne ruined my season on. last year. No, but listen. He, I mean, he's legit back. He's not forward anymore. He's back. He's Am back I right, and Tom? Back. It, yeah, he's been with us in the back line. Yep, right, right. Yeah, and uh, no, he last year he was probably you know he's had two 
two season ending injuries in a row. He's a year removed. He's still getting his feet wet. And then towards the end of the year, he started to find himself again. But this year, his pre-season, he has looked genuinely back whilst being back. Yep. And, uh, it's, yeah, it's been very good to see. He's one of my, uh, he's one of my favorites at the club because he's my draft buddy. And, um, he's just got that, got that poise, that ability to sidestep blokes, stiff arm. He just looks like he's in a different speed with the ball in hand. And he's, yep. um, yeah, he's looked back to his best. So I, uh, yeah, I advocate for the pick of, uh, of Junior Miller and I will be 100% keeping him in my team. There you go. Now, could you get a better rap than that for someone who is 441k That's as cheap. a forward who has, is priced at an average under 50? Thank you. That so, is a lock. So we have to do it lock. basically, don't we, Tom? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Wow. Right. right. I'm Tick doing it down. again. I can't believe I'm doing it again. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Luke Pedler, tell me about him. Yeah, Pedler's um, he's had a little bit of a interrupted start to his career, but when he's when he's played, he's looked pretty dangerous. He's basically a uh, he's drafted as a mid, but he's gone up forward and he plays like high half forward, and then he'll he'll roll through the midfield and he's got his body right over the break. He's uh, training the house down. He's ripping through every drill and he's using the ball really well. And um, we'd love to see it just from the point of view of like he's been in rehab for a while and he, you can tell it's, it's frustrating him and he's actually yep. been able to train him so we'd love to see that he's, he's a different bloke around the club he's up and about and happy but he's also on the field tearing it up so um, we've obviously got a long way to go but at the moment if, if I had a uh, if I had a draft whether the Crows been or not I think he'd be in the team Yeah it's a 213k mm. as a forward for him so he's a guy I'm eyeing off on my bench destroy now you can yep. answer Bargain. this one you can answer this one Tom in three words you can say forward mid or both, okay? And my question is, Ben Keys, go. Both. Both. Oh, he's going to play okay. a bit of both. And that's fair enough because – I think, I, yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm just, that's a draft-related question, mm. I think, because he's very underpriced. Yeah, I know because you – yeah, yeah I, can, I can understand why. Okay, so it's, um, it's a yeah. both. Again, early, but at the moment he's just been dabbling in both. I think ideal world he's just, just primary mid, but – he actually did did a fair bit forward last year, especially towards the end of the year when, yeah. when he was kicking goals and whatnot. And so he um, loving it too. Yeah, mm. yeah, wasn't he? Yeah, he doesn't mind a celebration, old BK. Yeah. Now, is there any other young guys here that I need to put on my list next to Luke Pedler for a potential round one start? Um, how much is Jakey Saligo going for? Because he, I know he finished well last yeah, year. He's he's too a, much. Uh, he finished a bit too. Is he too much? Mm. Yeah, he's done too much. <sighs> yeah, I'm yeah. telling him off for that. You can't be doing that. Can't <laughs> finish in the year. So he's over. He's um, over 500k. So yeah, it's a bit. Oh, too, is he really? Yeah, he yeah. is. Oh, wow. He yeah, came yeah, home yeah, really no, well. well. Mm. He had a good season. That's yeah, the thing. He played 16 games. 16 games. Average 58. So, mm. he actually, you pipped him, though. So, that's all right. Mm. Yeah, you got him. Yeah, that's oh, young fellow's got to learn somehow. <laughs> um, no, I think, yeah, I, I think all, all of our boys that like, last year were sort of that watch out for them all come in and, and did what they, even Josh Warren, I don't know what he's got up to, but he, I know he finished last year well and a few good games in there. Sam Berry, obviously, tackle machine. Yep. Harry Schomburg played well. We've got all those blokes that, were sort of the the prospects that we were hoping from the fantasy point of view would play well, but also just for us would just contribute. They all actually stood up and, and did as expected. So not too many more this year, but um, we'll see as the pre-season goes on who puts their hand up. Uh, last couple of burning questions from me. Um, Isaac Rankin, where does he fit in for you guys? Um, yeah, he's he's electric, that bloke. Guy. He, he does some things on the field that you just you have to sort of stand back and just tip the hat to, especially as a defender when you're playing on him in... You know, the, there's obviously the like the Eddie Betts comparisons and um, Charlie Cameron, just that ability to take over a game. And um, he just sort of, I think we've, we've, we've doubled him through the midfield. We've put him up forward. We've sort of rotated him around and try him in different spots. So I think for us, he's going to be that, um, put, him, put him where we need him and let him take over a game at times. And um, he has shoulder up in the off-season. He's gotten through that. He's starting to do contact and get that forward pressure going and get goals off that as well. He's just starting to really open up and, and take over training. So I think he'll be probably training as a midfielder. I think he'll go forward if we need him up there. But at the moment, um, it's a pretty big split, pretty good split, and he's someone who's definitely going to take over games. Fair enough. Now, Riley O'Brien. Mm. Warney's got a massive problem. With how, yeah, Warney's got a massive problem with how he runs, but we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> um, what's the ruck set up? He's, he's going to be the main man there. Who uh, chops out with him? 
Uh, yeah, good question. It'll be probably Riley still thought dependent upon uh, how the pre-season goes. I'd say Tex will continue to do the forward ruck work. Yep. Um, and then, yeah, Kieran Strawn's obviously the back up ruck. Elliot Himmelberg, if he plays, he'll, he'll be in the, uh, in the ruck spot after Birdo goes on the pine. But, um, yeah, it'll be the, the similar to most years where he's just been the number one ruck and um, runs around, you know, different ways. I'm sure we're going to get through here, but he, uh, he, <laughs> he can bloody run. And he, he can run and he can tap, and that's all we need in the He's a good runner, isn't he, dog? Good runner. He... He's just Great got a runner. bit of an awkward, a bit of an awkward gait, is what you would call it. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, but, but he's good. Yeah, he, can, yeah. he can take, no, he can take a mark. He's great. That's good. He can definitely take a mark. No, he's, right. he's handy. Yeah, he we just, we know if he's running down there, we'll, we'll just block and he'll, he'll stick him, and then we can run off and get a little handball receive and pump those captaincy points up. But he, uh, no, he's definitely worthwhile to uh, look at for the team because he's, he's going to play minutes. He's going to take inset marks. He's going to yep. win hit outs, and he'll. Uh, yeah, he'll be there. That's a big thing. We'll talk about rucks in a couple of weeks' time, but he, like, the rucks are a really tricky position this year because I think there we're is. seeing more and more clubs going that sort of two prong attack. Yeah. But Riley will pretty much, well, Phil Thorpe, sorry, he's going to be the guy that is just going to chop out. He'll still have that forward craft, obviously, with what he does. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's looking like at the moment. Um, we actually should be having those internals or the, um, what's it called, Marsh Marsh games? Marsh yeah, games yeah. now. Whatever they are. Yeah, <laughs> we haven't had those. Yeah, the pre-season games. Uh, we haven't had them yet, so obviously there's a little bit to sort out. But, um, yeah, if we're going off last year and how it's gone so far in the pre-season, it'll be along those lines. Now I'm just throwing one at you here because it's um, – this is our Defender show – Jordan Dawson had a great oh season, goodness. great first season as a crow. A and he was – one thing we do like in fantasy is the three points that you get, or the three points, Calvin. Yes. Three and three. I get, that you I get you. for running out of the goal <laughs> square and you're taking the kick in. So he was doing that a bit, which was nice. Um, although – if he could do it a little bit more, can you get sort of Brody Smith out of there? Because yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he took a few away from where we thought <laughs> yeah. that could have been Jordan Dawson's thing because he was basically – he averaged 100. And I think that he could even go a little bit further than that if he can get those couple of extra kick in the game. Well, that's why I was captaining myself at times. I thought <laughs> I'll just duck down and grab a couple of those kick ins and, and really bump it up. But, um, yeah, they, those two beat me there pretty much every time. And, I mean, I can't blame them. They're, they're good kicks. But, I mean, shit. Around a little bit, fellas. But we got fancy <laughs> games for him. Did there be um, a bit of um? Is he? Sorry, no, did there be a bit of a chirp off against each other when someone comes? Do you guys give each other like filthy looks and <laughs> like what the hell are you doing? It's my yeah. turn. Yeah. Yeah. Or at that training, like midweek, I got got given the duty of taking a kick in for a drill, and I then I blew it off the side of my boot, and then it was no more for you. Oh Colin. no! Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah. yeah. Those so, two would have been yeah, licking, licking their lips, running in. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, he's um yeah he's a star. He's he come in and just um, yeah fit right in. We we try sort of training in midfield as we did last year, but there's just times where whether it's matchups or game flow, we, we move him down back, and that's where he takes the kickings. He might play spare and get a few extras that way, or mm-hmm. run off the handball receives. And um, I don't, is he going to be solely defender through like position status at the moment? Is well, at the moment, defender? he's yeah he's just straight defender. So could he be a chance yeah, to pick up yeah. mid status if he does push up the gr- ground? Do you think is that something we'll probably see yeah, from his game? Yeah, a bit? I would think so. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because we ideally, like, because he's so he's got that height and marking ability, you can use him as an option on the wing, and um, then we still got Brody and and Parnell and all those blokes down back. Will Hamill to run off and use it from half back. So, um, yeah, he's someone who could probably get the dual position, and uh, yeah, he doesn't mind taking the kick ins from us. And as much as I'm trying to trying to win him back, I don't think <laughs> I'm going to get him because he's just he's always down there first too. I'm I'm too busy actually defending. He's just floating around, just waiting for the kick. <laughs> Ah, very good. I love it. Well, thank you, Tom, for your time on the podcast. We've got, uh, yeah, as we've got said, about six weeks or so to go until round one. you we be having a bit of a play with your side and, and take all those learnings from last year. Plenty of crows. <laughs> that's all right. Plenty but, of crows. Uh, but, but fix up your captain. Yeah, start with your captain, Tom. Fix that up, mate. You'll be right. Yeah, I um, look, that's that's first point of call, and I'll, I'll – um I'll get to that and sort it out with my team. But, um, you know, when round one rears around the corner, there's a temptation that I'll uh, – I'll just move it back over to the captaincy with me and see how we go. <laughs> Legend. Thanks very much for your time. Thanks, fellas. Appreciate it. Got a question for the traders? Tweet the boys at AFL Fantasy or head to facebook.com forward slash AFL Fantasy official. Tweet, tweet, tweet. Whoa, back to Twitter questions. 
helping people out. Oh, that's what we do. I've missed that little. Yeah. We might have to have that updated, actually, because oh. we do have an Instagram account now, which I'm getting a few questions from because I did a little story on that. So make sure you're following that mm, on good. Insta at okay. AFL Fantasy. We'll get a bit of content pumping through there as well, which hopefully, again, helps you. But also, it'll be an opportunity where you can ask some questions, which is where I'm going to take the first one here from. Team C. William. I'm not sure on Christian Salem. Yeah, okay. I hear you. 100% hear you. 100% hear yeah. you. That, that's three last year in round one. Oh, that wrecks your whole season. It does. It and does. it feels like it's a horrible thing to say, but it didn't come as a huge surprise. Like Salem's had the odd injury issues over his career, hasn't he? Yeah. Mm. So that's the risk you um, obviously have with someone like him. But – I think he is a 90 guy, but he's one that I would lose sleep over. Yeah, look, and I think that we talked about the structure of my team at the moment, but I wonder if as the days go on and the weeks tick closer to the um, first bounce, I'm just wondering if I'm able to have two of those guys there, yeah. in Yo and Salem. Mm. Yeah. You well, know, that's what you've got. But at the moment, that's what I've got, and that's what I felt comfortable with. But at the moment, I'm like, both of them are potential season records. They are. So but they also both just such good players. It's an obvious watch. I can understand the concern on yeah, Salem. You should be concerned. Still be concerned, mm. but just keep an eye on it. Yeah. Uh, then the second part of that, uh, who is another good mid price player? Salem and Yo. Ranking those guys, who are you picking first? They're so, almost the same price as probably twenty odd k. I just go on Yo. Yo's ahead of Salem at the moment. Yo, hasn't he averaged like a Yo potentially or something more than before? Yo. Yeah, he's just been elite. Before. So it's yo for me. Agree. But keep an eye on them both. Oh, both of them. We've Big got time. a long way to go. Yes. Oliver's saying here, heard Eagles coach might hold back young guns such as Ginby and Chessa. Will mm. happen? Well, sounds like that is part of their plan. It does. But you know what Ginby's that is? Ginby's probably the one that is ahead as per You, you know what that so. is? It's them not wanting to put pressure on these guys mm. to debut in mm. round one. Yeah. If it comes, it comes. Yeah. Yeah. But reading between the lines, Chessa – Seems like not much chance yeah. at all. We had this conversation off air for Quinn Finn UK. I think I've said that right. Of course um, you did. Is it a good idea to go for Hayden Young instead of Dacos as a point of difference? Mm. So they're basically the same price. Young's a little bit more expensive. Yeah. He's slightly better than Dacos. Look. But it's you've got Dacos in your 22. I do. Young is in the mix. He's 100% he's in the mix. Um, goodness me. If you can't have both of them, I'm still Dacos yeah, yeah. over Young. But I am as well. You know what doesn't sit well with me? People who are starting to go point of difference. Yeah. Especially when you're talking about a Dacos. Yeah. His ownership is so high mm. for mm. a reason. Yeah. Everyone watched him last year and were like, man, you are even going to be better this year. Mm. Don't get fancy with this just because he was the first player you picked in your team and go, I'm sick of looking at his head. Vanilla teams are good at the start. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. You I, don't need to mess around with that I, one. I don't mind avoiding those guys um, if you if there's a reason you don't if you've like got a them. Good story. Yeah, for it. yeah. Just I just can't do it based on the fact that a lot of people have them. You mm. know what I mean? I can't go. Oh, I'll bet against him just because so many have bet on him. Yeah. I, I need something. I yep. need some substance to do something like that. Agree. So Jake Lewis follows up here with, will Dacos get tagged? Yes. Does he get attention? Yeah, of course he does. So um, his role's going to be the halfback role. That's what it's yeah. looking like, isn't it? Yes, yes, definitely. And, um, yeah, he will get attention. I was thinking that about Young as well, whether yep. he will get attention. Maybe once or twice throughout Agreed. the year he will get a little bit, but yep. he's further down the line than Dacos. So if you're looking for a reason to split those two hairs, I think Dacos will cop it more than Young. Agree. Mm. Yep. Now, question here is McKenna. What do we think of him? <sighs> so I, I'm, I've seen him pop up in a lot of teams. Yep, so Connor McKenna, defender status, 373. So he's, yeah, he's low. It, it is low. Like if it's, it's under four... It's still got to be considered, yep. like extreme bargain territory. Put him, he's on Eight the watch. Of what's what's the best he did? Did he ever hit a seventy? I think he did. Yeah, Kevin. No, I'll have a look at it. But I don't. Guys like that, they, you just put them on your list. You don't well, need they to, have be. to be. If he's walking into the best twenty-two with an attacking role back there, 
What's he done, dog? So Connor McKenna, yeah, so he hit a 70 in 2019. So the year before he uh, he left. So he only played the six games in 2020. That was where the end of his career was. But, yeah, a couple of 60s. Yeah. Mm. It's Watch. a solid option. Just That's a play. And this could be the thing if we do have a rookie crisis. Yeah. No. You might need to go with blokes like that you as may. your fives or whatever. Yeah. Put him on the, the list. 100% he needs to be on the list. Put that is so list. cheap. Yep. Put how how about then this one here from Joe Keys uh, is Ben Long, an option as in his halfback role <sighs> at Gold Coast. So he's got defender forward status mm. and he's coming in at 513. So it's about a lot for me. 60-ish. You'd yeah. want him, he'd need to be going well over 80 for yeah. that to work, I reckon. Yeah. So That's a big a no fat no. That's yeah. a big fat no for me. Yeah. All right. Uh, a couple of questions about the app. When will the app work? When it's launched in the app store. And put your notifications it's on the It's not Twitter. broken. It's just not ready yet. Yeah. Will Day. Stop poking the bear, people. Okay. We're the ones that have to sit yeah. in the room with him. Will Day. Will Day. More midfield time. 17 games. Yes. 61 average. Yeah, no, I've heard I've his name a lot. I, I flagged this in Five, our preseason discussion. And you would not even listen to me. I, I kept saying, what about Will Day? I he will. might be moving into the midfield. What about Will Day? Scored well as in the past. I you will, would not listen to a I second will of it. end this conversation here with he's playing for Hawthorne. Yes. Okay. I told you that Done. back in the preseason. Conversation over. So yes. you're interested now. I'm interested, but it's a no. He's playing with Hawthorne, Roy. Yeah, he's going to have to do a heap. No one in that team will average over 80. No, but he's cheap. Or maybe 90, but we'll see. Could you consider um, Andy McGrath? We talked about him way back when. Oh, he's under. He's man. 81. Unders. Yep. Priced at 719K. Gosh, he's better than that. He's way better than and that. I've said he's better than that for years. Every time I've said he's better than that, he's burnt me. I can end this conversation. Plays for Essendon. Done. Yeah, well done. Okay, line yep. through. Thank you. Next question, Doug. The Berg. Look at him. <laughs> He's getting angry. <laughs> Harry Himmelberg. He's got the defender forward status. Harry. He's priced at 80. Nah. <laughs> He's been training forward. He's been training forward. That's yes, gross. It is. Why? Don't know. He was elite when he's back there. He doesn't even clunk him up forward. No. Nah. If the role was clear. That if he was, was playing defender, oh, would he locked. be a must start yep. almost for you? He'd be in the role on 22 yep. and he'd be one of my first picked. Yep, I love it. Like ahead of Brayshaw and stuff like that. Price at 80, he's a long way down the line because he's playing forward. Gross. Yep. Brady Hoff has been asked here by Jacob, um, could he be a point of difference there? Basically a 50 average, that's what he's priced at. So 450 could easily average 80. <laughs> Crikey. They gave him 15 games last year. Mm. Easily average 80. Well, if you think that, I don't mind you backing it. If you want, no. If you're backing someone to go from 50 and you think he goes 80, then that's a must That's a lot. It'll be it? so unique as well. Yep. Someone must have listened to you, Dylan. Liam Duggan. Cow. It's a no. You find a way to. Yeah, but I apologise because I had to write about someone <laughs> in the team and uh, you only have Yo and Sheed for so many spots, so... Duggan? Yeah. No? You can right. actually bump him up your draft order a little yeah, bit okay. if you want to get like that. But right um, behind that, yep. On the best podcast of the 18 Club Previews, mm. Ed Richards here. No. <sighs> Is he an option given his price and form towards the end of last well, year? what do you think, Dog? Uh, it would be a ballsy pick. Yeah, that's what I like. <laughs> oh, as if you'd even consider it. Bump <laughs> him up your draft. Hide behind that banner. Bump him up your draft. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to hide behind that. Yeah. I think. Interesting, just going back on the the Hoff call, I've seen um, Jai Cully also mm. pop up in a few teams there and mm. Schmucky was talking about how he's going to have a lot more. T- he only played four games last year. Yeah. Average 68, gets a discount on there, for, therefore priced him at 55. Mm. So once again, another real ballsy pick. It is. But he but was a good scorer when he played. He was and he's going straight in there, isn't he's he? Straight in there again. At 55, Roy. Mm. Hamish has asked this one. Is Redmond worth a shout with the Hawks and Gold Coast in the first two weeks? Well, who's stepping on my toes here, dog? This is the Kyle of Hardner. I put together the fixture of that the other day, okay. yeah. So ready to do your conditional formatting. Yes, I am ready to add the so, colours to the XL. Uh, so, yeah, Redmond. Now, this is the thing. This is something out of the Bombers as nah. well we heard this week. Oh, I have, heard this too. They're slowing the ball down. Oh, are they? Yeah. Because so, last year they were so fast so and fanatic, Roy. Going, <laughs> they just got to take so a foot off quick it. Turnovers. There's, there's your Andy McGrath, possibly. 
And Redmond. Good work for him. Redmond. Redmond was an 85. Riddler. What about the Riddler? The Riddler. Yes, could the Riddler be back? This year. Riddler could be back with this news. He could. Mm. Mm. Slowing it ball down. Oh, my God. I didn't think they could be any more boring and crap to watch. <laughs> they Look what they've be. done. Uh, <laughs> we sort of and mentioned this before. Who do you all have at D1 here for Lincoln? Doherty. Doc. That Will not Doherty. be moving. No, you no. don't think so? I'm no. not moving that. I've had a couple of iterations of my team where it has been brace dog, your dog, dog, please D1. use smaller words. It's not that long. Okay. Um, Doherty, if I remove Doherty, I'm removing the joy out of my team. Yeah, I know. Like you need to yeah. have something you like about your team. Yep. And that's my – that's what I'm clinging to. And that's – Dock at D1. Yep. And that's a reason why – Even if I have to pay up for it. Oh, McRae's been in and out of my team for that reason alone. Mm. I can't go through that again. No. That was really, really stressful. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm with you. If Pick we, a team that you really like. Like Doherty, if we don't start with him, you've got to use trades to get him later. That's what I'm thinking. Touche. Now, a bit of structure type question here is from Aiden. Uh, is defence the line where we save some coin to afford the th- uh, three or four big dog forwards in and top line mids? Is that what we – can we shave some coin there? Oh, do you know what? I've been shaving more coin in the midfield than I'm traditionally comfortable yep. with doing at the moment with my little, you know – half ass team that I've got sitting there at the moment. But the midfield is quite thin compared to what I usually roll with. So that's where I've trimmed. But I think we've got rookies there that we could be using in the mids. Mm. That's going to be the concern in the back. If you're trimming cash back in your back line, mm. you're, you're going with two mid-price guys in Yo and uh, Salem. Yeah. And then you're probably going with two rookies on the field, which we talked might about. Have to find some more too. Might be a little bit dangerous. But yeah. that's how I'm sitting at the moment. I've got the two mid-prices and the two rookies. The real... The real mid-price sort of guys um, in defence too, they feel like they're coming with a lot more risk than some of the other mid-prices returning from injury and things like that. Yes. I put someone like Yo <clears throat> next to Sheed. Yep. Danger, danger with Yo. Like towers over Sheed, for example, isn't yep. it? And then the other one where you shave money, you end up with Salem. All of a sudden, they're just high risk. Mm. So many high risk guys. Is this time of the year where we talk a lot about these mid-price guys? Like Warple. Yeah. You know, like, that's that's got danger written all over 100% it. 100% it does. And uh, we've got guys up forward. Like we got, uh, well, they're so cheap. Like Thomas, McLean, all these guys mm. are the guys in our team at the moment. They're all the money shavers. Yeah, they are. Miller. Yeah. Oh, all on. these guys making our team. My team's going <coughs> to suck. I can see so, it now. But that's, yeah, when we talk about forwards coming up later, like, that's going to be – how that structures, yeah. I'd prefer the big dogs there mm. than the defenders. I'm not sold on any defenders either, like no. that badly. Yeah, like Doherty is the only one, but you are paying an absolute yeah, premium, a premium for him. Mm. He's unders. Well, I think so. I think he's yeah, unders. but then how many of those hundred guys can you start with realistically? There, yeah. Well, there's. The thing. I've got Brayshaw at two at the moment, but like, geez, the three guys who went 100 he can last be my year. Boy, I the think. three guys who went 100 last year, listen to these names, who failed to back it up. Zebel, Aaron Hall, Jack Crisp. Chippy, chippy. So those three guys mm. did not back it up the next year. No. There may be some other thinking from some of that, though, just because you mentioned Chippy, Chippy. Oh. Jaden Short, though, mm. probably goes, he. Def, I think he goes back and therefore gains defender status and would then be in the mix of one of those 100%. top guys. So you may not need to be starting all the, you know, as no, many yes. top sixes Because he'll be one defense. that you want back there eventually. Eventually, yeah. Mm. yeah. And you can probably watch, just see it play out. These guys are priced almost fairly, a lot of those guys. Mm. Yep. That's the thing. They, they aren't going to increase a heap. No. They probably won't drop a heap either. No. Like no. it's just going to be... You, you use those guys as your upgrade targets. Mm. So defenders could be the upgrade target position. It could well be. There you go. All right. Uh, is running Yo at D3 getting too light in defence? <sighs> I love no, I the think, idea of it. I just don't know how you're going to fill it. Yeah. From the, yeah, for the from guys there. below that. Yeah. Like it's almost like a Salem at three and a Yo at four. Yeah. I think that's the way the price is. That's where I'm guys. sitting with it at the moment, dog. Yep. If you're going thin, I think that has to be the limit. 
I agree. don't think it can be thinner than that. Uh, yeah, I don't know how they're going thinner than that. That's very thin. So Matthew, yeah, too thin. Matthew's got here, Brandon Ellis is a differential. Any squirts on what position he's been training? No. no. Might have to get on to fish about that and see mm-hmm. how the Suns are looking. Squirt, he's, the, he's sore the draft dried type up. guy. So, sore stride up after dog cancelled the membership. Yeah. Did I think they went straight to the head office mm. on that one. They weren't happy. No, no squirts, unfortunately. But we'll keep an eye on it anyway. Sure will. Mm. Mm. Uh, right, draft. Doherty is the only defender that goes in the, the first, first round. round. I yep. think so. Then when do you <laughs> when when are you comfortable taking the next one? Okay, oh, sorry, Doherty. What number would you be happy to take him at? Do you think captains on draft day? Top five. Top five. Me. Yeah, I've got yeah that middle of that first round. Yeah. I think that's probably about where it happens. Mm. When's the next one going though? When are you going to be comfortable to take? The next defender. Well, as we said, there's a massive group of guys yeah. there. There's 15, 16 that averaged over 90 last year. So, so you could wait a few rounds. I think for you your... can. Probably, but Jordan Dawson, so, he averages 100. Yep. The yeah. Doesn't he? So could he go at the end of round two? But then if you're getting him at 100, then there's probably 10 guys that average about 90. Like, are you better off? I don't know. I hear. Mm. Getting those because we should have. better than the rest. We should you. have plenty of midfielders than a 10 on that. Yeah. That you want to make sure that you're locking in. So not till round what? Four, are know. you saying? Don't know. It's not going to happen, though. Someone's going to go, 100%. I want a defender there, and then it'll be a defender run of those little tears of those guys yep. almost. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think, it's a, I think it's a spot you can wait on. 100% you can wait. Yeah. You can go and organise your draft leagues now at fantasy.afl.com.au. Go and get those all organised. Work out your draft times and weekends and when you're going to do that. We're doing our big weekend coming oh, up. yeah. Uh, yeah, a couple of weeks before the start of the season. We've got our Airbnb all booked out. Hmm. Yeah. Be yeah. It's going to be very Best day fun, of the year, boys. That, that is. is. Best day. Well, now that we've turned it into a weekend as well. Yeah. So Hello to family. <laughs> <laughs> We're off. <laughs> and it's work. Yes. It's work. We don't want to even go. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's very important for us. So, yep. If you haven't already registered, go and do that at fantasy.afl.com.au. Go and get your league sorted. Go and get all organised. Um, make sure you're following us on all those social media places, such as Twitter at AFL Fantasy. Then personally, I'm at Warning DT. I'm at Roy DT. At Calvin DT. Uh, there's a Facebook page and our new Instagram. So, at AFL Fantasy over on Instagram. Tag us in stuff on there. We'd like to see if you post your teams on yeah, there. Yeah, why not? Um, we'll have some different things running through there, some polls and some videos and lots of different stuff. Mm. Pretty cool. It's going to be an exciting platform. You don't even have Instagram, Yeah, no, do you, oh, well, I better get on it. You might have Better to. catch up with all the young kids. Yeah. Could, yeah it's just... not young kids anymore, Instagram. It's like a bit I, of everything. No, well, yeah. I'm on. I'll do it tonight. You'd be a good influencer. I'd be massive. Just Especially in the... Don't post all your trout pictures on in there. The, in the uh, fantasy scene. <laughs> Dog, I'll just stick to fantasy. Good. Play on. I think we're done. (laughs) Yeah, we are. Thanks for tuning in. We will catch you next time. Plenty of great stuff. Make sure you're subscribed to the podcast because we've got plenty of different episodes floating through in this lead up to round one. 45-ish days, I think it is. Yep, 45. Yeah, well done. Are we?